Hey everyone, welcome back to the God Life Facebook page for another Facebook Live here. Um, once again, my name is Kyle. It's nice to see you all again today. Um, as you start joining us and um, logging on and, and joining our broadcast, I'd like to introduce our guest today. Uh, he's been on with us before, but we're happy to have him back. It's, it's Mike. How are you doing, Mike? I am doing good, Kyle. How are you? Doing pretty good. It's uh, nice to see you. Nice to be back on on the page. Yeah. Um, we have a, a great devotional for you today. It's talking about how we can share our stories and uh, share the gospel through our life story. So we're, I'm going to pray first and then we'll get going. All right. Lord, we thank you for this time and this opportunity to uh, discuss how we might uh, share our stories to reflect your glory and your character and uh, the way you save us and uh, redeem our lives. We pray that you'd um, teach us something new today. And uh, as always, we pray that everything that we do here would glorify you and uh, want more people to follow you. In Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got the, uh, the weekly question on our on the description of this video just above here. Uh, the question is, what's your story? And if you don't know how to tell your story, well, that's exactly what we're going we're gonna to talk about right now. So um, if you don't know right now, just watch and then you can tell us your story after watching. So uh, Mike wrote the devotional and he'll just, he's just going to take us through. It's a three-step process and We'll just get started with the first step. All right. Well, yeah. And first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody for joining us today. And it's a very important thing to do to, to learn how to tell your story, because you know, obviously the purpose is to share your faith with other people and bring other people into the kingdom. So the, the first question that the, de the devotional looked at was, um, what was your life like before Jesus changed it? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we can, we can get dramatic. We've probably heard some dramatic testimonies. Yeah. Um, and that's biblical, right? Can you think of an example in, in scripture, Kyle? Yeah, uh, Paul was pretty. Um, yeah, <laughs> Paul was pretty dramatic. <laughs> dramatic. Yeah, knocked off of his horse by the glory of God. So, yeah, uh, yeah and, and uh, certainly God works in dramatic ways. And uh, as long as we are careful to give him the praise, uh, that makes a big difference. But there, there are a couple of errors we could probably fall into. Uh, one would be not being very honest about what happened in our life. Um, and, and then another would be to just make the old life look so exciting or, um, you know, the idea being that, you know, what a terrible guy I used to be. And now I'm all, I'm all better. You ever yeah. heard stories like that? Yeah, that's an easy trap to fall into you want to um show people by what you do that your life has changed yes but uh that's not the actual central message of the gospel that you'll start doing things better and uh become a better person if you follow jesus that's not really i don't think it's even the captivating uh part of being saved Yes, be pretty hard to live up to for sure. Yeah, yes, that's true. <laughs> it can just be continue to uh, be beaten down and and disappointed in yourself for not living up to perfection, which is very difficult to do uh, and impossible to do. But if you talk about what your life was like before Christ and um, and just talk about how you didn't, you weren't. Um, aware of or you didn't know that you needed salvation then that's maybe more of a better place to start I don't know what 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 do you think yeah I think so and I think there there are going to be a number of people that if they think about it they really were enemies of the gospel like the apostle Paul uh, whether they were outright atheists or they were religious people because uh, just being really religious and following a, a set of rules and thinking your church membership or your baptism or uh, the, the different rituals you perform save you, that's, that's an inoculation to the gospel just as much as being an atheist is. Yeah. Um, sure. 
and, and any, anyway, you know, the gospel just doesn't center around self-improvement, but what God did for you. Romans 4, 5 says to, to the one who does not work, but believes on God who justifies the ungodly, uh, his faith is counted unto him for righteousness. <clears throat> so, you know, whether your story is a gradual or a, a sudden uh, dramatic awakening, mm -hmm. uh, there, was, there should have been a time in your life when you realize that your sins separate you from a holy God. And if he sent his son to die for you on the cross, then he's serious enough about sin that there's, there's not uh, works that you could do to uh, bridge that gap between yourself and him. Just as the Bible says, it's not of works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy that he saved us, Titus 3, 5. Yeah, and if we could do it ourselves, then he wouldn't have had to send Jesus to, to be the sacrifice for us. That would, be, that would have been a pointless act. Exactly. But yeah, if righteousness could come by the law, the Bible says, and Christ is dead in vain. Yep. Thank God. Thank God that's not true. Um, true. I want to stop and say hi to some of our uh, listener, or listeners or viewers. Matthew Wilson, always on with us. Nice to see you again, Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Thanks for joining us. Got some people watching from Uganda. So nice to see you all on, on this uh, Facebook Live. So the second question in the three uh, three step process of telling your story is, uh, in what ways did Jesus change your life? So, what about that one? Yeah, and um, on on this one, I think what you really want to do is uh, rather than telling your story outright, what you really want to do is conform your story to the gospel message so that it fits uh, the pattern of what the scriptures say that the gospel is. So, you know, we, we all know that the gospel is called good news, mm -hmm. but, but in order to make it um, a good news that appeals to the listener, uh, the, the gospel is presented in a number of different analogies. Can you, can you think of any of those? Um, there's... Well, adoption, we're adopted into the family of God. That's one way. Yeah, that's a beautiful picture of salvation. Yep. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's water or food for, for those who are hungry or thirsty. Amen. Anything else? You have any? The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 6, that all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So, you know, it's, it's a rescue for the straying mm -hmm. sheep. And you think about the, the good shepherd who leaves the 90 and 9 and goes out to find that straying sheep. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. picture of salvation. Uh, yeah. There's a passage in Luke that talks about how, uh, you know, the, the Lord forgives the debtor who, who pay, owed more than he could ever pay. Um, and that, that's us as well. You mentioned adoption into the family of God and, and food for the one who's never been satisfied. There's also rest for the weary and heavy laden in uh, Matthew 11. And I think in today's world, that's so appealing because there's so many people who are feeling heavy burdened mm -hmm. right now because of, uh, you know, lost jobs from the pandemic or, uh, you know, being overly anxious about the future or things like that. And, and God wants to give us rest, the, the Bible says. So I, yeah. I think one of these comparisons usually is one of, it, you know, you, you feel like you could fit your story to that. And I think if that is a personal thing for you, you're the best person to tell that. So if, mm -hmm. if, you, can, if you can make it fit in that way, then that's a great way to bridge to, from your story to Jesus' story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you don't want to just, fo again, focus on what has changed in your life, because that might not apply to the person you're talking to. But if you can tie it to the gospel, there are some universal uh, things that everything everyone goes through. Um, yeah, I think so. I, you know, you, in, in your case, you, you may have been someone who just couldn't find purpose in their life. And after coming to know Jesus, then 
you know, your life has meaning and hope. You're, you're looking forward to the future. Uh, mm -hmm. That can be very appealing to somebody. For sure. Yeah, so personalizing it, but also um, making it something where they can see themselves, uh, their life being changed by Jesus as well it would, be, would be helpful rather than just listening to how great your life is or how great Jesus has been to you. <laughs> right. Um, the last question is, how were you made new or basically what, how did you obtain salvation? So how can you tell your story as you're presenting the gospel? And I guess we'll get to how you were saved specifically after that, but how, how can you tell your story while you're presenting the gospel? Yeah. And Kyle, one of the ways that I like to use um, comes from a, an old pre presentation of the gospel uh, my story is not all that dramatic, but I do remember one time when it came out in a compelling way because of the way that the person asked these questions back to me or answered the question and then tried to turn the last question around. I mean, and the five questions are, number one, do you have any kind of spiritual belief? To you, who is Jesus? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that there is a heaven and a hell? That's number three. Uh, number four, if you died right now, where would you go? Mm -hmm. And then the last one was the one that the guy turned around on me. Um, if you were, if what you believed were not true, would you want to know it? And the, the really nice thing about these questions is it, it turns it in, you know, from like a, just a me preaching at you presentation of the gospel to a real conversation. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of times you get interesting answers to these questions. So it's a good idea to be ready to explain, uh, you know, your position, uh, you know, when you give an answer back, how, how you would answer the other person. So uh, in, in my case, this young waiter uh, answered all the questions and then asked them all back to me. And it gave me the opportunity to tell my story. When he got to the final one, I was unhesitatingly in my response. Uh, if there were anything that wasn't true, then I'd certainly want to know it. Now, I, I became a Christian. I trusted Christ when I was only six years old because my, my parents, who weren't churchgoers at the time, sent me to a Christian school. And so the very first time I ever heard the gospel, the, the easy thing about it is I, I knew I was a sinner. Uh, I just didn't know how badly, you know, in what what a bad position I was in because of that and how far I was from God couldn't be reconciled to God other than through the cross. But the good news, and it was very good news to me is that Jesus stood at the door and knocked. And if I were to open the door, uh, he would, he would come in to me. So, um, you know, when I, when I answered that question so quickly, it, it really made a difference in this young man's life. I think, um, I don't, he didn't trust Christ at that very moment, but I think he was very surprised that, you know, I said, well, of course I would want to know if that was not true, because, you know, today I work for Global Media Outreach. And, uh, you know, so my life is kind of dedicated to telling other people about this. And if I were wrong in anything, I certainly wouldn't want to continue doing that. So, no, yeah. but because I feel like, you know, I've built on the right foundation, uh, I know I'm not wasting my life. I'm more convinced than ever, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. We couldn't do anything uh, that would be more important in our lives. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So I, I don't know how many people have joined us at this point, Kyle, but you know, I, I just like to say to them, how about you? If there's anything that we've talked about today that isn't personal for you, um, you know, the Bible says, examine yourself. That's in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Mm -hmm. Now, Kyle and I would never want to talk anybody out of their confidence in the gospel. But, you know, when you think about your story, your experience, is it really yours? Or is it your churches? Or is it your parents? Is it, is it uh, you know, whatever school that you went to or uh, the, the rituals that you've been taught? Your good works. Are you really in the faith? Is Christ in you? Uh, if you're not sure, Second Peter 1.10 says to be diligent to confirm 
your calling and election. And so to describe what that means, I'd like to tell a little story. I heard recently there were some soldiers, paratroopers who were tasked with packing parachutes. Uh, there was, there were, they were in pairs. There was one person who were pa was packing and then the other person would examine uh, and then check off with a number that, you know, they had examined that it was a quality pack on the, on the chute. So and the next morning there was a trial jump for a, a bunch of people who were in the school. And uh, unfortunately, one of the chutes did not open and a young paratrooper was tragically killed as a result. Uh, so, you know, the, the ambulances come, the fire trucks, everybody rushes over and then they start, you know, doing what they can do for the young man. But uh, then they obviously, when it's all over with, they're looking at the number to see who packed the chute. And when the number was announced, the checker just wailed if I'd only been more careful, if I'd only been more careful. And so yep. today people feel like they have plenty of time to make this decision. And, and I, th I think that leads to carelessness, especially if you're young. Um, yeah. But no one knows if they're gonna live to be 105 or just 25. Mm -hmm. God's word says that now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. And today, if you can hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Jesus said that the way of destruction is broad and many go that way, while very few go the narrow way. And if, it's, if that's true, then there are millions in hell today, Kyle, who are saying that very thing. I wish I had been more careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a sobering thought. And I think it makes you think about people in your life who you uh, know don't trust in, in the Lord and you haven't been asking them about it and you just say, oh, I'll, I'll talk to them later when, when the time is more right, but the That's time right. is now. So um, we hope that this little three-step process has been uh, helpful for you all. And if you watch this all the way through, just let us know and uh, try and share your story with these three steps. We also have the devotional linked on this post uh, if you need to go back and look at that too. But we'd love to see so many testimonies on this uh, video just shared so we can rejoice in what the Lord has done and, and share this with other people as well. Absolutely. So I'm going to pray and then we'll be off for the next few weeks. Actually, we won't be back uh, in two weeks because it's going to be right before Christmas, but we'll be back right after that in January. So let me pray. All right. Thanks, Kyle. Yep. Lord, thank you for this time. We pray that you'd show us how to um, honor you with our stories and uh, make the gospel compelling to those who do not currently believe. We pray that you put people on our hearts in our lives that don't know you, um, that we've been thinking about for a while, and uh, give us the boldness and the strength and the courage to, to talk to them about uh, our salvation and our security in you. We pray that many people would come to know you as a result of the sharing of uh, personal testimonies, Lord. We love you and we trust you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we'll see you guys in a few weeks. Um, hey, thanks everybody for coming. Yep. Thanks for watching.